Welcome to the Glory Road Television Show. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Smitheman, and today is an exciting day because I'm going to be teaching on the fall feast. Yes, get out your notebook and get out your pen because we are going to be learning all about the feasts and how they impact us in this year. Now, uh, Raha Shoshana just happened on September 7th this year of 2021. That is called the Feast of Trumpets. It is one of the three feasts that happens this time of year. The second feast is the Day of Atonement, which happens September 15th and 16th, or it's called Yom Kippur, the highest holy day of the year. The time between September 7th and September 15th here in 2021 is a time in which is called the Days of Awe. It is 10 days of repentance. It is fasting, prayer, cleansing. It is a time of cleansing before the highest holy day of the year, which is Yom Kippur, which happens, as I said, on September 15th. And then on September 20th through the 27th, is the Feast of Tabernacles, in which we celebrate the fact that Jesus tabernacles among us, and the Jews remember that during their time in the wilderness, they had to build shelters or booths to live in, and that God was their provider. So this is a whole month of fasting and feasting, but it's called the Three Feasts of the Lord. Rosh Hashanah, another name for that is the Feast of Trumpets, blow the trumpet in Zion. You all are familiar with that scripture, right? And I'm going to read to you uh, the scriptures that are relative here to this particular season. Before I do that, I want to let you know that prophetically what's happening right now on the Hebrew calendar is that this cleansing is taking place because God is properly positioning you for your new season. So I just want to speak to some of you right now because I know that there is a, a cutting back that has taken place. That took place in the month of Elul. Actually, there was a crushing in the month of Av, which is, uh, happened around the end of June, beginning of July. Then in the month of Elul, there was a cutting. Okay, so there was a cutting back, but there was also promotion time. So God was promoting us. He was properly positioning us for what is getting ready to take place here in September. But now it's a time of cleansing. So we had a crushing, we had a cutting, which is a cutting back, you know, as though you're a tree and you need to be trimmed back, uh, pruned during that time. We were cut back and set up for promotion. And then now is a cleansing time. It's a time of purification. So if you're going through a process here where you're trying to hold on to things, and this is the prophetic in what I'm sharing. If you're trying to hold on to, to ways of doing things from the past that happened before the crushing and the cutting time in order to set yourself up for this new season, the Lord says it's time to set that aside. He says, I need you to develop faith and understanding in your identity in me because I'm taking you to a very new place. So this 10 days of awe is a day of cleansing. I mean, it's 10 days of cleansing and purification. It's where you need to get before the Lord and pray and fast and slow yourself down some so you can hear from him. See, what he's cleansing you from is your old patterns, your old ways, your old thoughts, um, even your old ways. Uh, maybe you're a business owner, an entrepreneur. Um, maybe you're in Christian marketing, whatever it is that old ways of doing certain things because there's a new thing that God wants to do. And that's really, really hard. We actually have to go through a process of cleansing and purification from yesterday in order to step into the hope of our future. And so that's what God's calling us to right now. And so, you know, as, as you're spending time with the Lord, when he's speaking to you, what you need to be doing is writing down the things that you need to be letting go of because God is properly positioning you for the new thing that he wants to do. And so he's cleansing you of the old and he's putting on new garments. He's getting you ready for the new things that he has in store for you. Now, during this season and during this time, again, we have the Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets. We have the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. That's the second feast. And the third feast is the Feast of Tabernacles, okay, which will go through the end of September. These three times are times where we set ourselves apart we go through this process of cleansing and, and consecration. It is a time where we launch into 
the rest of what the new year holds. And it's Hebrew New Year 5782. What that means is it's 5,782 uh, days since the creation of Adam and Eve. That's what 5782 means. So we've entered into what's called the head of the year. There's two new years on the Hebrew calendar. One is Rosh Hashanah. The other one is Passover. And so Rosh Hashanah through Passover of 2022 is called the fall rains. The spring rains, it would have been Passover 2021 to Rosh Hashanah 2021. Okay, so we just entered the spring rains and we've now entered into the fall rains. Why is this important? Because I'm going to read to you the scriptures for the season. This is Joel chapter 2 verses 22 through uh, 23 through 32. Now, why is this important? Right prior to that, the Lord begins to speak to the people. And he says, listen, uh, call a, a sacred fast, a solemn assembly. Everyone come together. And that's during these 10 days of all. Okay, this is during the cleansing. So it's from, from Rosh Hashanah through this 10 day of cleansing. He's saying, call a holy fast. Gather the people together. So we need to come together as a people. We need to be united as the people of God in a cleansing. So God can cleanse us of last year and help us step into what he has for us for, for the new year. It means a mind shift has to take place. So he begins then to speak in Joel uh, chapter 2 verse 23. He, he sets us up with the fasting and he says, I'm cleansing you now. And then in verse 23 he says, be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you autumn rains and righteousness. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. What that means is that in this month, okay, we start the what's called the fall rains. But he promises... He promises for those of us who are faithful, that are going through this process, that are, are going through repentance and cleansing right now. He promises for us as his unified congregation, the body of Christ, that we will receive both autumn and spring rains in this month. Now, why is that important? It means that, that a double portion is coming to us. This is one of the promises of this season. It's one of the blessings of this season. Double portion. Okay. So that means that whatever was acquired from Passover 2021 through Rosh Hashanah 2021 will now double itself. So take a good look at what are the things in your life that multiplied, that increased, that were a blessing. These things that became part of your foundation, even through the crushing that crushed a lot of foundations, but left what was still valuable, okay, through the crushing, through the cutting back, and the promotion time, whatever is left, God is going to build on. What's not left, what he's going to be doing is making something brand new. He's setting us up for the new season. But he says anything that's between Passover and Rosh Hashanah is going to double itself. So whoo-hoo, hallelujah, I'm really happy. So take an inventory of what he's going to double. Then verse 24 says, the threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Okay, so these are the vats that are in heaven. This is what Hosea chapter 2 is talking about. The releasing of the vats, so the wine, the grain, and the oil coming forth. So he says here that these threshing floors will be filled with grain. Grain is uh, is what's purged out. It's also new. Uh, it, it, it's, it's part of the cleansing process. Um, it's part of greater revelation. It's a purging out of the revelation. So great revelation is going to come to you during this time. He's promising this. So grain and then uh, vats will overflow with new wine. Um, and that new wine means new opportunities for you to seize and occupy. Now I want you to think about this. What are some of the lands that God wants you to seize and occupy? And then oil is coming and that's the anointing oil from heaven. That's a new fresh oil that's going to come over you. You're going to walk into a greater abundance and overflowing of the power and presence of the Lord. He's properly positioning you. This is a year 5782 where God spoke to me about double glory. Whoo! Double glory and, and being a glory carrier and glory carriers they seize the opportunity that God has before to reveal the glory in that moment. They position themselves to have the vats of heaven open and the oil of glory 
poured upon them. May they be refreshed and may they bring forth the joy of the Lord and may they be overflowing, filled to overflowing so that they can make a deposit. I know I'm talking to some glory carriers right now. Some of you are glory carriers and God is giving you a divine setup, proper positioning for what he has for you. Woo! I don't know about you, but I am really, really excited because I want that glory oil from heaven to come upon me. I ask the Lord every day, Lord, give me more and more of your glory. And there's a proper positioning that needs to take place in our heart if we're going to carry the glory of the Lord. And so these scriptures here are talking about the fact that greater abundancy is going to be coming to us. And that includes your finances, financial abundance, that, that, that's glory abundance. That's all kinds of abundance that's coming to you through the grain the wine, and the oil. So, whoo, hallelujah, somebody praise the Lord. This is a good word, and this is for now, okay? Then Joel chapter 25 reads, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts, the young locusts, the other locusts, and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. Another one of the blessings of this uh, season is restoration, yes, God is going to restore you. And see, part of the 10 days of awe is a cleansing, a purging out, right? It's a time of purification because he's starting the restoration process. So I just want to encourage you, restoration is coming to you. He's going to restore what the locusts have stolen. Whew, I don't know about you, but I'm really happy about that one. So that's the third blessing. So the first one, again, the first blessing is a uh, is a double portion. The second one is abundance, financial abundance included in that, the restoration. The, the fourth blessing is miracles. Now listen to this. This is Joel chapter 2, verse 26. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. I know if you've experienced shame in your life, the Lord is saying, this is a time not, not only am I going to restore you, but I'm going to position you for greater abundancy where you're going to be full. You're going to be full. And that, and see, people who are restored, they become full. They become full in the glory. They become full of the power and presence of God. They become so full that they begin to see the miracles working in the earth realm. So Lord's desire that miracles come into the earth realms, but we have to position ourselves to be full. We have to position ourselves in the realms of prosperity so that release can come forth and we can see miracles. Then Joel chapter 2 verse 27 says, Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. Okay, this particular blessing is God's divine presence. He's going to bring his divine presence amongst us. Wow, how amazing. Having the Lord's presence walk into the room, being filled to overflowing in abundancy with the Lord's presence. That is one of his promises. And again, he says, never again will my people be shamed. You know why? Because Jesus took your shame, he took your guilt, he took your fear, he took your anger, your frustration, your confusion, every negative emotion that you can have, and he nailed that to the cross, okay? So when he died, you died. He nailed that to the cross. He buried you, and then he resurrected. You resurrected with him. You were buried with him and resurrected with him. That's what Romans chapter 6 says. We're resurrected with him. What? Away from fear, guilt, shame, frustration, confusion, all of these things that we feel bound by, we have been set free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so I know you have been set free. Okay, Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And then he says this, and, and this is the sixth blessing. I will pour, and, and after this, he says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Woo! Verse 29 says, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And so, 
This is a blessing for our sons and daughters. This is a generational blessing. This is a blessing that comes from being the children of the inheritance. It is pouring forth. Now the blessings of the Lord are pouring forth upon you and of blessings on your sons and daughters and on your grandsons and your granddaughters. A, a heritage of blessing is coming forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo, somebody needs to share this video because I know you're getting excited. There is a blessing that's coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then verse 30, he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So he's talking about the end times. He's talking about the, the uh, signs in the heavens of his return. Then the last scripture is verse 32. He says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved for on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance as the Lord has said among the survivors who the Lord calls. So there is deliverance. I know you've been praying for deliverance for yourself. For your, for your family members, for your children, deliverance is here. It is a promise of the Lord. And it came through Jesus Christ as our Savior. He has delivered us from the bondage of sin. He has delivered us into a place where we can live in the heavenly realms even today. That we can have the spiritual blessings of heaven made manifest every day. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Just, just picture yourself there right now. Come on. I just want you to picture yourself seated next to Jesus Christ. He's, he's next to the Father and you're on Jesus' lap right there. Come on. You are in that space and place. That's where his church is because the head is there he's the head and we're his body and the body has to be with him and where's the enemy the enemy's underneath our feet he's under our feet and so we need to properly position ourselves to be able to be those people that no one understand the times and seasons that's having an issachar anointing this is the times and seasons where we had the feast of trumpets the day of atonement and we have the Feast of Tabernacles. And these are the seven blessings or the seven promises for this season. Let me read them again. You've got double portion. You've got financial abundance. You've got restoration. You've got miracles. You've got a blessing on your sons and your daughters. You've got God's divine presence. And you've also got deliverance for all of your family members. So there is deliverance available to you. So these are the things that we need to be letting people know about. God has made a promise to us in Joel chapter 2. The beginning of Joel chapter 2 talks about the fasting, talks about the cleansing, talks about the purification. Make sure you read that. Then when you get to verse 23, that's where he starts. As a result of setting yourself apart, I know you've been crushed, I know you've been cut and promoted, but I also know Know that this is a time of cleansing. You know, when the Lord called uh, Joshua to take the people into the promised land, he said to them that they need to consecrate themselves before they enter. We always need to consecrate ourselves before we enter into a new season with the Lord. And so no matter what you're going through right now, the Lord is calling you to be set apart. It is a time of cleansing. Now, Here's another very, very important thing that I want to share with you in regards to this season because this is something that the Lord wants us to, uh, to know about and he wants us to make sure that we practice. So in, in line with the feasts, okay, there comes a time where the Lord speaks to us about the importance of this season and that's in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 16, okay, and he's talking specifically about the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to read that, Deuteronomy 16 verses 13 through 17. He says to the people, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days, and it is the 20th through the 27th of September, after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. So after you, as you take a look at the blessings that God has given you, that's what that means, because he plans on doubling those blessings. He plans on bringing them into a place of abundance. He says, be joyful at your feast. See, we have celebrated the Feast of Trumpets. We have gone through the 10 days of all. We have been sanctified on the day of atonement and and now we have entered into the feast of tabernacles he says 
you and your sons, your daughters, your men servants, maid servants, Levites, aliens, fatherless, widows, all those who live in your towns, be joyful at your feast, is what he says. For seven days celebrate the feast to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and all the work of your hands, and your joy will be complete. Ooh. I don't know about you, but huh, I want some complete joy. I'm just telling you right now, I, I want to know the joy of the Lord. And listen, that comes when we understand His fullness, His abundancy, when we understand that uh, in, etern in the eternal realms, everything is already complete. It's already finished. The finished work of Jesus Christ has set us free. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. It's a past tense thing. It's already occurred. We're just called to walk in what already has taken in place and take in place in the eternal realms. So then we read down in Deuteronomy 16. So he's saying, celebrate, celebrate with everyone, celebrate the abundancy. And he says, great joy will come upon you. And then Deuteronomy 16, 16 says, three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose. Okay. Men, women, humanity, all of humanity must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose at the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks and the feast of tabernacles. Okay. So these are three specific times of year. One of those is tabernacles. Okay. Which is coming up the 20th through the 27th. The next one is the feast of Pentecost or the feast of weeks. Okay. That happens around the June, July timeframe. All right. That's that happens after after Passover, okay, and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is during Passover, okay, so our next celebration is Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and then it's the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks, but three times a year, all the men, women, humanity, who, who is the head of their household, needs to come before the Lord and bring him an offering. He says that. He says, bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Wow. So he's saying, listen, have your feasts. Remember what I've done for you. Walk through the cleansing. Remember the day of atonement. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, the importance of that. Remember the feast of tabernacles. Your joy is made complete. And bless me with an offering. Now, my husband and I have done this for years, and we have seen incredible growth, incredible increase in multiplication, being faithful unto the Lord to bring him an offering during this time of year. And so I just want to encourage you today Give an offering to your church home. Give an offering to a ministry that is blessing you with the word of God, especially now since, you know, the church is also so much as online as it is in person these days with everything that we've suffered with. So maybe there's specific voices that you continually listen to. Bless them, okay? Because when you bless them, you're blessing the Lord. Bring an offering in proportion to that which how God has blessed you. Pray about it. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, what is it that I can sow into this ministry that sows into me, Lord, that, that deposits the word of God on the inside of me? What can I sow? And so just begin to think about that and then bless the Lord. Simply go and donate. If you want to give to Candace Smith Ministries, Dream Winners International, we would be blessed to receive, as would your church. Give a blessing to your church. Give a blessing to your local community. And go and bless today and you will feel so good because you would have done exactly what the Lord speaks in Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times a year. And listen, that's all you, this, this is something that's continual. It doesn't matter if you're living in the New Testament or the Old Testament. Though this is written in the Old Testament, it is revealing the fact that Jesus has met all things, but we still give an offering unto the Lord. He says three times a year we're to do this. And so God has always impressed it upon me and I I will continue to bless the Lord because I have seen, I have seen his faithfulness and his greatness. And I know that you have too. Now let's talk a little bit about the day of atonement. Okay. So we start out here at the beginning of September. We have Rosh Hashanah and Feast of Trumpets. Then the 10 days of awe or the 10 days of repentance, which we're in now, which is the cleansing and purification. We are preparing ourselves for the day of atonement or Yom Kippur, which is the highest holy day of the year. This would be the year that uh, the Jews would take in a, um, a, a goat, a, a lamb, and they would kill that lamb and they would put the blood, okay, inside the tabernacle because it's a remembrance of that. But we remember the fact from the book of Hebrews that Jesus himself took his blood and he sprinkled it 
on the mercy seat in the heavenly tabernacle. The heavenly tabernacle was is one that is in existence today. It lives forever, okay? It's not like earthly tabernacles that are built and can actually be crushed and fall. This is not one made with man's hands. It's one made with God's hands. And so God has... Uh, has this special time that we are to remember that because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we are saved and redeemed. Yes, we remember this also during Passover, okay? Jesus, our Passover lamb, who died, who shed his blood for forgiveness of our sins, but we also remember it this time. I think it's beautiful that the Lord positions this feast directly uh, in between uh, Feast of Trumpets and Feast of Tabernacles. So it's like the Lord's telling us a story. He's saying, I want you to enter the new year, blow the trumpets in Zion. Um, it's the head of the year. Be excited about who I am and, and that I created you just as I created Adam and Eve. And then he says, then let's go for 10 days for this cleansing and purification. And then I want you to know that you are cleansed and you are purified by the blood of Jesus because he himself went in to the Holy of Holies, went into that heavenly tabernacle and sprinkled the mercy seat so that we could be reconciled to God in a relationship with him. So that that's the second feast. And then the third feast is the Feast of Tabernacles where joy comes upon us. Abundancy is here now. And we come and we bless the Lord for all that he has done and we bring him an offering. Yes, this is the culmination of the entire month of September this year. It's a process. It's a plan, but it's necessary. And if you're faithful and you do what God is telling you to do, he is setting you up. I want you to know there is a divine setup that is taking place. I know you're being cleansed right now, but by the end of the month, you're going to be experiencing great joy and walking in it because you would have passed through the cleansing, the purification, the remembrance of what Jesus has done for you, which also helps you walk in a greater glory so that double glory will come into the earth. So the Lord is cleansing us and getting us ready for that movement of that double, double glory. And so this is an exciting time, and it is a time where we get the opportunity to remember Him. Everything about the Feast of the Lord, Fall Feast, the Spring Feast, and then also uh, the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Pentecost, everything about all of these seven feasts remind us of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, how much He loved us, that He came to, to from heaven to earth to make a way that we might be in relationship with the Father, where the enemy came in to kill, steal, and destroy, and, and cause us to be in a, a place of eternal death until we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Now we are in a space and place of eternal life. The dominion of sin, death, and the grave has been defeated, but the dominion of life has come upon us. And so I just want to encourage you today, share this with somebody who needs to know this is a special time of year. It's a divine setup for amazing things that God is getting ready to do. He is blessing you beyond measure, and he wants you to be a part of what he's getting ready to do in the earth today. And simply being in that place of, of practicing these three feasts here in this month of September 2021, this particular time is properly positioning you for the divine setup that God has for you, the double glory of 5782 that we are all believing for. Please share this with a friend so that someone else can be encouraged because God is doing amazing things and he so much wants to bless you. All right, have a great day and I look forward to talking with you more about the amazing things that God is doing this month.